Serial killers often work in mysterious ways, with mysterious motives and calculated movements. In these cases, they could have planned everything, but they missed the cameras watching. Today, we'll look at times serial killers were caught on camera, right before or after their murderous acts. Sometimes, just being confronted was enough to unravel the whole story, and some of these went on way longer than they could have if people had caught the signs. Lucky for the police, someone is always watching. Let's dive in. Serial Killer Scopes Out Path Serial killers have to scope out a dump zone, I guess at some point. This CCTV footage supposedly shows attempts by serial killers Nathan Menard Ellis and his partner David Leasley, who would be convicted. The footage, however, shows the men gathering something out of their car before approaching the water. That something would later be revealed as the dismembered body of their victim, Julia Rawson. Broken into smaller pieces, placed into black plastic bags and hidden in the undergrowth by a canal. Officials didn't take long to find the body, just a month after the murder. The footage seems to be of them scooping out of the canal where the body would later be hidden, as well as disposing of some items, a blood-stained sofa, burned clothing, and rugs. GPS slipped in the bag of a robbery. This clip of a robbery gone south would help identify the killer and be used in the method of catching them. Thanks to one clever Rite Aid cashier and a well-placed GPS, the man in this video, seen forcing his way into an early morning Dunkin' Donut, would be caught and linked to six other slangs. This clip was taken minutes before the suspect, Keith Gibson, killed his sixth victim. The victim in question was a Dunkin' Donuts manager who was simply opening the store for business, over about $300 from the safe. Soon after, he'd hold up a Rite Aid where a cashier was quick to put a GPS device in the bag of money he was stealing. He was caught soon after holding up another store nearby. The cashier knew enough that the device was precisely what police needed to pin these murders on the culprit since the CCTV footage had not been sufficient on its own. Stephen Port, the Grinder Killer in this clip, we see Stephen Port, the grinder killer, traveling to meet the man who would allegedly be his fourth victim. The meetup is very casual, as the victim, Jack Taylor, invites the man into his home, as we see from the door footage. He quickly leaves after. Stephen was a case that haunted investigators long afterward, as he very clearly could have gotten away with it. He would use fatal doses of GHB to murder his victims in 2014 and 2015, dumping the bodies near his flat. Luckily, after four, the doorbell camera finally caught the man responsible as the bodies were found and Port was apprehended. Unfortunately, police seemed to have ignored information from family and friends, further allowing his spree to continue. Real estate agent turned serial killer. Willie Suarez Maceo was charged with two first degree murders making him a serial killer when he'd previously just been a real estate agent. A real estate agent now facing some very disturbing accusations. Surveillance cameras from a local business showed the man walking towards the crime scene, which gave them a direct picture of the suspect. Before more killings occurred, and went cold for a long time, linking him between them since there hadn't been any other connection. Whether he targeted them as the men were unhoused residents of Miami or for some other unhinged reason is unclear. Although an argument may be made whether the presence of unhoused residents in Miami may have been bad for business, so to speak. Murder of Susanna Piley When Susanna Piley and David Gilroy started their secret affair, Gilroy, a married man with children at the time, they had no clue how things would end. Supposedly, Suzanne had been ready to stop something, which led to a massive fight. Her final bus journey would be caught on the public transport CCTV cameras, getting off the bus at 8.49 a.m. Piley was also captured by a few other cameras, walking the last part of her journey to work. Now, last month marked the fourth anniversary of the murder of Suzanne Pilly. However, there are no cameras at the actual location. There was no body to be found when they looked for Suzanne, but there were 84 cameras that caught unique perspectives of the women's final moments. For the officers involved and those who knew and loved Suzanne, the case is far from closed. CCTV cameras were outside of Piley's work. Still, they did not see Gilroy going in and out of the basement garage and later buying four air fresheners. 
No matter how close Gilroy tried to cover his tracks, there was another camera to catch him, leading police to the brutal murder with no body to search for. Unlike others, this was more of a crime of passion than a serial killer, but how he disposed of the body with such precision that nobody has been found even 11 years later. It calls to question just how he knew the precise way to dispose of the body or how he did it in the first place. Seminole Heights Serial Killer Small neighborhoods are notorious for keeping things quiet. Still, Hal Jr. and Rosita Donaldson couldn't keep things under wraps no matter how hard they tried. I mean, shock. Shock and fear for the community. Whether they refused to speak to the police or not, not after footage of their son, Howell Emanuel Donaldson III, surfaced, linking him directly to a string of violent crimes. Felton is the fourth victim in a series of shootings dating back to October 9th, but his death has also yielded a potential break in the case. The man's colleagues, 24 at the time, had joked that the CCTV circulating looked like him before the truth emerged. The footage was grainy and difficult to decipher. It showed a man walking just moments before Ronald Felton, a 60-year-old unemployed construction worker volunteering at a food bank, was shot and killed around 5 a.m. It was the fourth killing in a string. Hal was arrested after handing a pistol in a bag to his manager at the McDonald's he worked at, collecting his paycheck and turning in his uniform. He did this after telling her to bury the bag, so deep no one would find it. Fortunately for the prosecutors, this alerted his manager that something was up rather than dissuading her as he had clearly hoped. Truthfully, the man's co-workers had been joking about the resemblance for a while. At that point, saying Hal looked exactly like the murderer on TV. In fact, they had even started calling him killer to his face without knowing the true nature of how on the money they really were. The footage of a man suspected to have killed four people between October and mid-November was unclear. Without the evidence Donaldson supplied himself, they may have never caught him in the first place. Crossbow Cannibal Killer Unfortunately, all the signs are sometimes there, but people seem to ignore them. Stephen Griffiths was a disturbed man who dreamed of being a notable serial killer one day. And he called himself in court the crossbow cannibal. Stephen Griffiths pled guilty to three murders within a year. A string of murders in the Bradford area was later linked to the man's dark desires. In 2009, after failing to get enough attention with assault and being released from jail multiple times, Griffiths began targeting sex workers, killing them with crossbows. He would use public transport to help move bodies in bin bags to dump them elsewhere. In the piece of chilling footage that finally led to his arrest, Griffiths was found flipping off the camera in question. As he realized his gruesome acts were being filmed, he seemed to not care that he'd been caught. Body found in parcel in Amiere. Amier police claimed this footage was used to find and identify the man shown in this clip, who allegedly shipped a dead woman's body by national mail. Days after this gruesome act, the culprit may be identified on the basis of CCTV footage. But this isn't the first time women are being attacked this way. There have been several attacks in recent weeks, and worse still, there are no leads. Local police spent time studying the CCTV footage for some sort of break in the case, as the company had no direct leads at first. The CCTV cameras had been installed after a string of cases just like this. However, they were grainy and needed outside lab attention to try and enhance or bypass the distortion caused by the low-resolution cameras. Police claim nearly 40 families across Delhi had been approached to help them identify the bodies. The woman in this package had been distinctly disfigured, far past the point of recognition, and they only discovered the gruesome parcel when the body began to smell foul. All they had was that the alleged killer pulled a rickshaw to go off of as of this footage. Suspected Serial Killer Caught with Forehead Tattoo This suspected serial killer was taken into custody with his semi-automatic pistol used in multiple slings. 25-year-old Perez Reed was arrested on a federal charge of interstate transport of a firearm with the intent to commit a felony. There were six shootings from the same handgun, killing four people. Surveillance video showed the suspect, Perez Reed, having a door held open for him by the victim as the two of them went into the apartment building together. The victim was later found dead just short of a week. A few days earlier, Reed had been spotted entering the same structure and given his security staff license. This victim, while attacked first, would be found just after the first. 
What finally linked him was the forehead tattoo helping identify him, despite the face covering otherwise masking his identity. Possible Serial Killer They believe that this footage would link them to a potential serial killer of 20 victims across three states. Police in Virginia releasing new video of a man they suspect to be a serial killer. The footage in question would show a car pulling into a shopping center late but just mere minutes before an attack happened, where the attacker would use a hammer against his victim. It's reminiscent of Bundy and how he would approach his victims by luring them under the guise of needing help or directions before he would attack. The attack supposedly stopped in May of 2010 and continued as he traveled across many states. Whether this is all the same killer or similar attacks happening separately, the clip can't tell anyone that for sure, but they did know that they caught someone, which is chilling in and of itself. John Covington, the Philadelphia Killer In 2005, Patricia McDermott's murder was a baffling story. Officers had obtained new surveillance footage showing a man who had seemingly randomly walked up behind McDermott and shot her for what seemed like no apparent reason. However, in this shot, the man's face was obscured. Only later, when a second camera showed the man entering a hospital, they were led to Juan Covington. The later confessed to Patricia's murder and many others and attempts. While the footage of the murder is unclear and difficult to find even now, this is a case where if it was not for strategically placed CCTV cameras, they might never have caught the killer. 